Yo, 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 what up, what up, what up? This is Toby with Online Security, and we are back with another Cert Master Laugh for Security Plus 701. If you've been enjoying this series as much as I have, please don't forget to smash the like button. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel, and don't forget to leave a comment about questions and anything you want to see in the future. In this lap here, we're going to dive into the world of containers. Containers is a really, really, really big deal right now, okay? They help with deployment. They help when it comes to deploying application services to multiple servers. Right, let's say we have multiple servers over here that we want to turn into web servers right? we want to create a web farm right here right and that web server is going to require apache it's going to require some scripts it's going to require some some other files folders some some accounts a, a bunch of different things for this entire web application to function well instead of individually downloading those things on all of these servers over here what we can do is bundle it and uh, we can bundle the application and its dependency its requirements and all the factors that it needs to run and push the bundle out to multiple locations here we're just going to start with uh, uh, with one of our servers right we're just going to have a server and then inside of that server we're going to create containers right we're going to use a, an application called docker to create those containers so let's get to it y'all first things first we're going to log into our machine and make sure docker is running all right, we're simply going to make sure Docker is running. All right, we're going to log in as administrator. We need to switch users. We're going to log in as admin. You know the password. And to check if Docker is running, we're simply going to open up the services. We're, we're simply going to up and open up our services and look at the running services. So in the search bar, we can just type services. All right, we get this services app that allows us to look at all the running services on our system. Double click that. If we scroll down, this is in alphabetical order, at least it should be by name. We can see the Docker engine is running. All right, sweet. I'm gonna go ahead and minimize this and open up PowerShell. I'm gonna scroll down. PowerShell is on my taskbar. I'm gonna right click this, run as administrator. Yes, we wanna open that. I'm gonna go into full screen here. All right, cool. Now in PowerShell, we're gonna type IP config. We're, we're just gathering information about our system right now so we can understand this drawing that I drew out. Our system, we're looking at the information for our system. The Docker container, this app, this container is gonna have different information. It's gonna have a different host name, a different IP address, and it's gonna have other services on it that's running, All right? Now this is our IP information. 10.1.16.13, 10.1.16.13. Right, we're gonna look at the win version of our system. Right, we can see the build is 18.09. Well, the this the version is 18.09, similar to what we have here. We're gonna look at the host name, which should be MS10. We're gonna put that here. Score that. We're gonna leave what uh, PowerShell open. All right, we're going to leave PowerShell open because in the next section, I'm already on the next section under the instructions page. In the next section, we're going to interact with this Docker application that I mentioned, right? The Docker application that's installed on our MS10 server. We're going to interact with that right now. Okay, now here we go. So first thing we're going to do, we're going to look at the Docker images that we have. The images are what we use to create the containers, right? Here's an image that we have. All right, next, we're going to use that image to create our first container. We're going to say, hey, Docker, create this container called my first container using this image. Cool. Now we have it created. Now we can look at the services to, to see what's running. All right. We can see that this was created a few seconds ago. We're going to go ahead and start our container. We run the same command, docker ps-a. Docker ps just shows you that you're running containers. It just gives you a status on it. Right now, we have our container running. Let's go ahead and log into it. All right, we're going to go ahead and log into it using this command. The IT right interactive session is going to allow us to log into our container. So now we're logged into our container. Remember this picture here. We have our server. Right, this is our server. 
on our server we have an application called docker this is docker we use docker to create this this container right and now we're logged into that container all right so we're going to run a few commands just to prove it look at the version it's going to be different from ours all right this version is different from our version all right the last few of theirs is 4851 look at the ip address it's going to be different from our ip Right, this IP address is different from ours. That is 172.24.230.119. How did I get the IP address? I just hit this button right here. Right, we're just going through the steps. All these steps are just giving, are just showing, and here's the default gateway. All these steps are just showing you the, the information of this container. The host name is definitely not going to be MS10. Right, it's a completely different host name. All right, next that we can see the ports that are that are active, right? Ports that are either active, listening, or established. Next that shows you active connections. Right now we can see IP addresses and the after the colon are port numbers. Com they want to know if port 5985 is open or is it listening. We don't see 5985 on here, so we're just gonna put no. All right, next, we're going to ping another device on this. We're going to ping a device that is has a similar IP. Uh, yeah, similar network as our network, I believe. Nope, but it is a device that we can communicate with. So it must be something with the Docker service. Now we're going to try to ping our MS10 device. All right, we're going to try to ping our MS10 device. And the ping should fill because the container that actually went through. That is not supposed to go through. That is not supposed to go through. That's interesting. Because we should not be able to ping our host device. There must be something wrong with the configuration here. Um, when we ran it, did I? Uh, let me see. We did this. But that is not supposed to happen, right? We're not supposed to be able to ping our local machine, right? The ping should fail because the container and MS10 virtual machines have IP addresses on separate network. So I'm not sure how this is going through right now. Here, let's exit. And I'm going to do this again. Host name, MS10. I just exited my machine and I'm going to log back in. Is, is already in use. Is it already in use. I'm gonna try to log back into it. All right, so this says that doctor, you have to remove or rename that container. All right, what I'm gonna do, just bear with me, I'm gonna restart this machine because that shouldn't work I'm just gonna reboot this machine and if you have issues like this y'all right if you know you're having issues like this just reboot the machine just start it over I'm just gonna start it over and then recreate that container and log back into it and run these same commands again if you're not having those issues then feel free to keep on going along but this is how you would troubleshoot something like this right just reboot the machine it's okay to start over and right? we wouldn't be starting over completely from scratch in this instance right here. So what I will have to do when it comes back on is I don't have to recreate that. I have to run this again, but I'm going to run through all the steps again. All right, so I'm going to load back in gonna get the admins password log back in I'm gonna start up PowerShell as administrator I'm going full screen okay I'm gonna create this container again 
All right, so it's already created. Okay, my first container is created and test container is created. Let me start my first container again. All right, my first container started. I'm gonna run step five again. Okay, now I'm going to, this is already created. So what I need to do here, yeah, let's see something. This may not work because it's already created, but I should be able to just log back into it. So give me a second. I think there's a command here. Yeah. I'm going to use this command to see if it'll log me back into that box. All right, let me just type the whole thing. Test container is not running. Oh, here it is. Uh, a Docker start test container. And then I'm gonna try to connect back into it. All right, cool. Let me just show you what I did. All right. It hopefully this helps somebody else. So I, I tried to run this command again. Let me go back, let me go back, let me go back, let me go back. So I tried to run step six again, but what step six is doing is creating, it's trying to create and log into the container at the same time, right? And Docker's complaining saying, hey, that container's already created. All right, cool, you're right. So what we need to do is just start it, right? That's it. We need to just start it up with Docker start test container. That's if you're having this issue. If not, you can really just start this entire lab over and start from scratch and you should be good to go. But I started it up. After I started it up, I'm gonna log back into that container with this command, Docker exec IT test container and CMD and I'm logged back in. I'm gonna do host name just to make sure. All right, we're gonna do this ver again to get the version 4851. We're gonna get this IP information. Right, we're 168. Um, oh, it's probably because I, I started it back up. So let me just switch it. It probably got a new IP address. And the default gateway is now 172.30.64.1. Host name, we already did that. Net stat. There is no 5985 running. We're gonna try to ping this guy again. That works. Now this is what I had concerns about. This is still working. All right, well, we're just gonna keep going, but this is not supposed to work, right? You're not supposed to be able to, unless there's a, some type of rule allowing that, this container shouldn't be able to ping back to our system. And that's what's happening right here. We're gonna keep going. All right, now we are going, wait, do we need to exit? Yes, we need to exit this container first. We're gonna exit and then go to the next section, right? This section here, we're gonna run docker ps-a. 